Good morning and welcome to a very special um, service here at Epsom Methodist Church. It's special because it's Remembrance Sunday um, and it's also special that we can't actually meet in person this week due to the new lockdown so everything we've done has been done online and that includes all the input from our uniformed organisations and others that have taken part in this service. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this ability that we can still share worship on this Remembrance Sunday. We ask that you fill our hearts with your spirit and breathe life into us so that we can truly feel your presence whilst we remember those who died during the First and Second World Wars plus all the other conflicts that have happened since. In your name we pray. Amen. Families who have lost loved ones in war remember them every day of the year. But this is the day we come together as a community to remember all the lives cut short by the madness of war. God commands us to love one another and nothing testifies to the fact that we as human beings fail to obey that command more than the enormous quantity of resources, the incredible amounts of effort and ingenuity we dedicate to the task of making war on each other. War creates opportunities for individual sacrifice and heroism but represents a collective failure to live in accordance with God's will. When we wage war, we fail in our task of building God's kingdom here on earth. The sorrow we feel when we remember those who have died in war is not just sadness for the lives lost and the loved ones bereaved, but an acknowledgement that we as human beings have, after thousands of years, still not cured ourselves of the habit of war. Our uniformed organisations have been painting and creating poppies this year for a slideshow later in the service. One thing that many may notice is that not all these poppies are red. The red poppy is the most famous symbol used to commemorate those who sacrificed their lives in World War I and conflicts that followed. Wearing a poppy was inspired by the fields of poppies that grew where many fell. The red poppy is connected to the Royal British Legion, a charity created by the veterans of World War I. And they say that the red poppy represents remembrance and hope. There is also the purple poppy. Animals like horses, dogs and pigeons were often drafted into the war effort and those that wear the purple poppy feel their service should be seen as equal to that of human service. In particular, we remember how many horses were killed or injured during World War I. Donations to the Purple Poppy Appeal, which is organised like the War Horse Memorial, will go to charities like War Horse World Horse Welfare and the animal charity Blue Cross. We then have the Black Poppy. Now, the Black Poppy has two different meanings associated with it. It is most commonly associated with the commemoration of black, African and Caribbean communities' com contribution to the war effort as servicemen and servicewomen and civilians. The campaign organisers say that whilst they also support the red poppy, they feel that the black poppy highlights the contribution and the place of black, African and Caribbean communities in remembrance. Finally, we have the white poppy, which is what I'm wearing. The white poppy is handed out by a charity called Peace Pledge Union, which promotes peace. And unlike what some people think, this is not a poppy that doesn't remember those who died in conflict. It remembers our servicemen and our service women, but it also remembers the countless numbers of civilians, regardless of which side they were on. And what it aims to do is to remind people that as we move forward, we need to look toward peace and not toward making war. Let us pray. 
Lord, we are saddened at the thought of war, of soldiers who must fight, and all those people who are killed. Today we remember the sacrifice with great sadness. We thank them for what they did for us. We also remember their want for us a victory. That without their bravery, these wars may have been lost. And our lives could have been so very different without the freedom we so much enjoy. We thank them for what they did for us. Lord, we remember those who are still living in conflict, who live in fear and desperation. Be with them and provide them with comfort. And support those who are attempting to bring peace. We pray for the peacemakers working towards peace. We are saddened at the thought of your suffering, that you too had to be a great hero and walk to Jerusalem, be arrested, tried and killed on that horrible cross. We thank you for what you did for us. We also remember that you won for us a victory. On that Easter morning, you rose again and helped us to overcome our human nature so that we might rise with you. We thank you for what you did for us. Amen. Hi, my name's Alexis and I've, I found a really nice poem on, online and I would like to share it with you. Here's the picture on the front. Poppy, Poppy, what do you say? Wear me on Remembrance Day. Poppy, Poppy, what do you tell? Many soldiers in battle fell. Poppy, Poppy, what should we know? That peace on earth should grow, grow, grow. I have also made a few rocks. This is my favourite one. And this is my other. Many of our commemorations focus on the dead of the two world wars. Wars that cost millions of lives in the first half of the 20th century. The First World War is only now passing from living memory, and the Second will follow it soon, but it still permeates our culture. Film, television and fiction reflect how big a part the events of 1939 to 1945 still play in our country's perception of itself. So it's important not to confuse remembrance with nostalgia. It seems odd that we seem to feel nostalgia for such a terrible time, but we are drawn, I think, to the moral clarity we feel about that conflict. Because we know, don't we, who was right and who was wrong. And at a time in our world now where morals and values that were once taken for granted are up for debate, it's natural to enjoy employing our imaginations to put ourselves in the shoes of people who were unambiguously in the right, fighting an unequivocal evil. Jesus told a story about two men who went to the temple in Jerusalem to pray, and it might be a story that's quite familiar to you. One of the men was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were people within the Jewish community who stuck more strictly to all the religious laws set out in the scriptures than most people did. It's a bit like the difference between Orthodox and Reformed Jews today. There's a minority of Jewish people who try to follow the letter of the law and live a very traditional lifestyle, whereas others are more open to changing social attitudes and morals. This particular Pharisee took great pride in being a good man who always kept God's commandments. The other man was a tax collector. Now remember, at the time, the Jewish people were living under military occupation by the Romans. Someone today who works for HMRC might sometimes make themselves a bit unpopular, but that was nothing compared to the way this man was seen. He collected taxes for the foreign invaders. He was a collaborator. He was a social outcast. 
And when the Pharisee went to the temple and saw the tax collector praying there too, the Pharisee's prayer went like this. Thank you, God, that I am not like that man. I fast for two days every week. I give a donation to the temple. He thanked God that he was a good man and he looked down on the tax collector as a bad man. The tax collector, though, didn't hold his head high like the Pharisee did. He prayed with his head bowed and asked God to pity him. He knew that he had done many wrong things and that he was far from perfect in God's eyes. Jesus said that it was the tax collector and not the Pharisee who had set things straight between himself and God when he left the temple. He had acknowledged that he was human and fallible and had asked for God's love and forgiveness. The Pharisee was still lost in his own pride. The Pharisee was feeling a bit like we do when we indulge in that fantasy of being on the right side of a moral crusade, of knowing that we are the good guys and everyone else is totally in the wrong. The story warns about enjoying that feeling of moral certainty. We are lucky enough to live in a country that found itself on the right side in the war against fascism. But let's not get too comfortable in assuming that if we had lived in Germany or Italy or any of the other countries that fell under Nazi sway, we would have been among the heroic few that resisted. Fear, peer pressure, unwillingness to rock the boat or draw attention to ourselves. All these are powerful forces that push people to confirm, to conform. In the BBC drama World on Fire, set during the Second World War, a German couple are terrified that the authorities will take away their daughter, who has epilepsy. People with disabilities were among the first victims of the Nazis. And if you or I were in their position, can we be sure we wouldn't be drawing the authorities' attention to a neighbour who was Jewish or gay or a communist just to take the heat away from our own child? When you were at school and you saw someone being bullied, did you always stand up for the victim? Or did you sometimes keep quiet for fear of drawing the bully's attention to yourself? I know I did. I can't say as the Pharisee, uh, Pharisee does, I thank you Lord that I am not like this sinner because I am the sinner. And yet I am also the Pharisee because sometimes I can't help but speak out about the failings I see in others. It's a bind we are all caught in, imperfect as we are, so desperately in need of God's grace. <laughs>
Me and my brother painted poppy stones to remember my grandma and all the other nurses who have worked in COVID-19. My grandma has worked as a nurse for almost 50 years and is still living and she still works as a nurse today.
So let our remembrance today not be tainted with self-righteousness or condemnation. Let us be humble when we contemplate the sacrifice of those who fought against tyranny. But let us also be humble when we remember those who were complicit with evil. There is evil in the world today, and I know I am not doing all I can to resist it. I salute the people who volunteer to go and help the refugees living in terrible conditions over in Calais. I salute the people putting themselves in danger by speaking out against oppressive governments all over the world, from Brazil to Russia, and I wish I had their courage, but I don't. I could be doing more to help the weak, the hungry, the persecuted. We all could. We need to acknowledge that, like the tax collector, we are sinners, but we also need to acknowledge that we are like the Pharisee. Our remembrance should not be a comfortable, sentimental remembrance. It should be an, an, a challenge and an admonition to ourselves because every war is a failure to follow God's commandments, not to kill, to love one another, to turn the other cheek. To say that is not to condemn or dishonour the individuals who fight, to belittle their bravery and sacrifice. But we must deny ourselves the comfort of making that bravery and sacrifice a foundation on which to build self-righteousness. Instead, let's work for peace. It's a struggle which can seem less glamorous and heroic than war. There aren't as many films about negotiation and concession and compromise as there are about men firing guns and blowing things up. It's difficult, demanding work, but the peacemakers are blessed, Jesus said. They will be called the children of God. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for peace, but not the easy peace, built on complacency and not the truth of God. We pray for real peace, the peace God's love alone can seal. We pray for peace, but not the cruel peace, leaving God's poor bereft and dying in distress. We pray for real peace, enriching all humanity. We pray for peace, and not the evil peace, defending unjust laws and nursing prejudice, but for the real peace of justice, truth and brotherhood. We pray for peace, holy communion with Christ our risen Lord and all humanity, God's will fulfilled on earth and all his creatures reconciled. We pray for peace and for the sake of peace look to the risen Christ who gives the grace we need to serve the cause of peace and make our own self-sacrifice. God, give us peace. If you withdraw your love, there is no peace for us nor any hope of it. With you to lead us on, through death or tumult, peace will come. Amen. Now we join together with our worship group as we sing Abide With Me.
thank you for joining us for today's service and we thank all those who have contributed this morning. Now let us join together in the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>